Rahman Rahim. I start in the name of Allah, the All Merciful, the Ever Merciful, and the Everlasting Curse be on the Satan and his followers. Allah's blessings and peace be upon Muhammad the Prophet and upon his pure family. Our respected viewers, I begin this episode with one of the sayings of the Master of Martyrs, Al Imam Al Hussein, alayhi salam, when he says, He who is greedy is disgraced. He who discloses his hardship will always be humiliated. He who has no control over his tongue will often have to face discomfort. Peace and blessings be upon you and welcome to His Imam Hussein. A series of episodes in which we talk about the different stages of Imam Hussein's life, starting from his miraculous birthday, talking about some of the events and stories happened to him during his holy life, mentioning some of the prophetic quotes said in his right by his grandfather, the Prophet of Islam, and then ending up with his unparalleled and matchable martyrdom. My name is Hassan Hadi, and I'm honored to be hosting this program. Our dear viewers, in the previous episode, we spoke about Imam Hussein's message sent to Muawiyah, reminding him of his false caliphate and that he had taken allegiance from people for his son Yazid by force. However, in today's episode, we will continue talking about Muawiyah heading to Mecca in order to gather more support for his son Yazid. Our respected viewers, as Muawiyah continued his efforts to bolster and consolidate support for Yazid's succession by collecting the allegiance of key figures for him, Imam Hussein alayhi salam also began to increase his public denunciations of his succession. Traveling from Damascus to gather oaths of allegiance for his son, Muawiyah eventually arrived in Mecca during Hajj season. There he set up a member near the Kaaba and had those famous figures who had agitated against allegiance to Yazid brought before him, including the Imam alayhi salam. After declining his first public call to allegiance, Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan delegated two swordsmen to stand beside them ready to strike. He approached them, saying to the people the following, These are the elders of the Muslims, and nothing can be completely resolved without their opinions. If I invite them to give the oath of allegiance to Yazid in your presence, then certainly they will accept my words and obey me by all means. In this regard, the Imam Hussain alayhi salam said nothing, and later some people took this to mean his approval of allegiance and criticized him for going back on his word, that he would never accept Yazid. They said the following: You told us, in reference to Imam Hussain alayhi salam, you told us you would never give allegiance to him, namely to Yazid, and now this. The Imam alayhi salam said in return, pointed out that he did not actually accept the allegiance and that he was unable to denounce Muawiyah to prevent unnecessary bloodshed. Thus he had neither given allegiance nor denounced him. From the outset, as we have seen in previous episodes, our respected viewers, the Imam alayhi salam knew that for which he was de destined and that Shia or his Shia would require his leadership in a greater task. However, for that, he had to patiently bear the indignity of his enemies and oppressors for a broader goal in the way of Allah, the Almighty. This was also an important lesson for the Shia as a whole, who were often divided after the martyrdom of Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam and sometimes even before it, questioning why one Imam pursued a course of action while a different Imam pursued another. Why did Imam Ali, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, threw the sword in one circumstance and not another? Why did Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam sign a peace treaty with Muawiyah? Why did Imam Al Hussein rise against tyranny? while his son Ali appeared to seclude himself from any and all worldly affairs. It's a lesson, indeed, in submission 
that the Imam السلام, always knew this because he is the living expression of the will of God. It is indeed a lesson of in submission that the Imam السلام, always knows best because he is a living expression of the Almighty Allah's will. We, their Shia, cannot however always comprehend the greater plan of our Imam and it's particularly in such circumstances that we are tested, sifted and refined. However, in this way the Imam sees who are truly his followers, his true Shia as well. Praise be Allah the Almighty for his destruction of the tyrants. For some time after this the angel of death finally came to take Muawiyah to his new home in the fire. Yet the greater victory of death of the tyrants was overshadowed by the knowledge of who was to succeed him. When the accursed Yazid finally arrived in Damascus following the news of his father's death, he ordered a letter dispatched to his governor in Medina, Al-Walid bin Utbah, concerning the two remaining and important opponents to the claim of caliphate. Yazid bin Muawiyah says in his letter to Utbah the following, Summon al Hussein bin Ali and Abdullah bin al Zubair and ask them to pay their allegiance to my caliphate. If they refuse, then severe their heads for their bodies and send their heads to me in Damascus. Likewise, take the oath of allegiance from the people of Medina. And if they refuse, then let them share the same. Peace be upon you. O Master of Martyrs, when you were born, and when you were martyred, and when you will be resurrected. Our respected viewers, this is the end of today's episode. Let's pray that Allah the Almighty hasten the reappearance of the Master of our time, and to enable him to interpret the message of his grandfather who says, I only desire to spread good values and to prevent evil. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته